Proverbs chapter number 2. We'll begin reading in verse number 1. The Bible says, My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding, yea, if thou criest after knowledge, and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver, and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord, and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous, he is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. Let's pray. Father, we sure do bless you. Thank you for the good singing that we've enjoyed. Thank you for the good testimonies. Thank you for the good presence of God. Now, Father, we pray that you would continue to put a hedge about this place. We pray that you'd bind the powers of hell. We pray that, Lord, the sweet Holy Spirit of God would continue to do His office work. We pray that You'd pull on our heartstrings. Uh, Lord, I pray for those that might have laid You down. Lord, I pray they'd come back and pick You back up. Lord, I pray for those that have never known You, that, Lord, uh, through the preaching of the Word of God, You might be made known unto them. Lord, I pray they'd come to trust in you as Lord and Savior. Father, I pray for those that are low, you'd lift them up. Those that are seeking, they would find. Those that need a special touch, that today they'd find it in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, now, Father, I pray you'd bless the reading of the Word of God. I pray you'd meet every need. I pray, Father, for every prayer request. Uh, especially those families that are facing hard decisions this day. Father, I pray, uh, Lord, for those that are traveling, you'd give them traveling mercies, and those that are watching via live stream, that, Lord, you'd help them. Uh, but for the next few minutes, uh, continue to stir in our midst. Uh, use this unworthy vessel. Glorify your namesake. Uh, save that one near as hell. And, Father, we'll bless you. We'll praise you. We'll exalt you because you're worthy of our praise. For it's in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we ask it all. Amen and amen. I want to draw your attention to things from the text. I want you to notice, first of all, the choice. In verse number 1, the is my son, if thou wilt receive my words. In verse number 3, the Bible says, yea, if. Thou criest after knowledge. Uh, in verse number 4, the Bible says, If thou seeketh her as silver. Uh, three times in the first four verses, uh, you find the word if. Uh, 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 this is instruction by uh, David. King David is about ready to go off the scene. Uh, the Lord has uh, 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 revealed unto him... Uh, his days are short. Uh, he's already uh, uh, preparing his son Solomon to carry on and to be the next king of Israel. Uh, and he's given him some instruction. Uh, and he lays it before him. Uh, and Solomon uh, now must make a choice. Uh, is Solomon uh, going to do uh, what his father is instructing him to do? Uh, can I say tonight or this morning, uh, uh, the Lord... Uh, is going to give you a choice. Uh, he will not force himself on you. Uh, he will not make you to do anything against your desire, your will. Uh, but he is uh, going to lay at your feet uh, an opportunity uh, and you must choose uh, which direction you'll go. Uh, <coughs> can I say a lot of folks uh, in this day and age are making poor choices. You'll make a choice. You'll leave here either closer to God or farther away from God than when you came in. You'll either come to know the Lord or you'll leave out of here rejecting the Lord. Uh, but you'll make a choice. We see the choice. Now notice the consequences. Look in verse number 5. The Bible says, Then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. 
Can I say every choice has consequences? And can I say that uh, David says unto Solomon, uh, you need to seek the fear of the Lord, you need to seek after the wisdom of God, uh, and if you'll make those things your choice, uh, then you'll come to understand the fear of God. Uh, you'll under understand the knowledge of God. Uh, uh, friend, uh, our choices have consequences. Uh, 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 listen, uh, I know we live in a world uh, where they want to teach uh, young people to live however you want to and there are no consequences, but that's just not true. Uh, uh, you look at some of the older folks like me. Uh, 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 the reason we walk with limps, uh, uh, the reason we have have certain pains. Uncle Arthritis visits us. Because uh, when we was young, we didn't make good choices. Uh, uh, we're suffering consequences. Uh, hey, uh, we had two teams of folks over at the jail this morning. Uh, those folks didn't end up in jail because they were good people. Uh, they ended up in jail uh, because they made a poor choice. Uh, and they're suffering the consequences for it. Uh, can I say... We've got folks in here that are excited about God because they've made Him their choice. We've got some in here that know the Lord, but they're not excited about the Lord because they haven't put Him first in their life. Can I say we see choices? We see consequences. You can leave out here on fire for God, or you can leave out here the way you came in. Either way, I'm going to go somewhere and eat something and, and it, it'll be all for me because I'm doing what God told me to do. And there's choices. There's consequences. But notice the compensation. You see, any time you make the Lord your choice, He has a way of rewarding you that this world doesn't understand. Notice the compensation in verse number 6. The Bible says... Uh, for the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. We find in that verse alone, uh, you'll find you can have knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. Can I say one person once said that knowledge is to know how to do it. Understanding is knowing that you can do it. And wisdom is knowing when to do it. We got some folks that are knowledgeable, but they're not very wise. They just haven't learned when to use it. Hmm? Where's my buddy Owen? Owen, stand up. I like your necktie. Stand up. Owen, how old are you? Twelve years old. Twelve and never been kissed. What a blessing. All right, you can sit back down. I saw enough of you, all right? Uh, Owen's about as smart a little fella you're ever going to find. He is full of useless knowledge. He'll tell you all kinds of stuff. He's even got his own little podcast. But you talk to his dad. Owen's smart, but he's not wise yet. He's just learning. Huh? Now, can I say some of us are filled with some knowledge, we just don't have much wisdom. Hmm? Did you ever put your foot in your mouth? It's because you didn't exercise wisdom. Hmm? Uh, I'm interested this morning, verse number 7. The Bible says, He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. The Lord is our strength and our shield when we walk uprightly. But if I read the Bible right, the compensation of the consequence of making him our choice is verse 6. He giveth wisdom out of his mouth, cometh knowledge and understanding. But then verse number 7, it goes a step farther. Because can I say, God never just gives you something. He gives you pressed down, shaking, bubbling over. I mean, God gives you a lot more than you ever bargained for. Uh, and the Bible says in verse number 7, Brother Adrian, that he layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. That means he's got stored up. 
Brother Bob, it's just like that building you got out back. You got some things stored up in there for special occasions. The Lord's got a storehouse. And when we make Him our choice, He not only gives us knowledge and wisdom and understanding, He layeth up sound wisdom. Now, as I was reading this the other day, I, I, I couldn't get away from that thought. What is he laying up sound wisdom? What is that? Can I say that God stores up sound wisdom for the righteous? That's what the Bible says. It is sound because it looks at the things not in their notions, but in their proper substance. Sometimes... Uh, we look at things in the wrong light. But when we're walking in the wisdom of the Lord and He has given us sound wisdom, we see things in proper perspective. I want to preach on this thought for a minute this morning. I want to preach on saved, sealed, and sound. Saved, sealed, and sound. Can I say that if you're here today and you're saved, uh, that means that you've been pardoned from your sins. Uh, that means there came a point in your life when you realized you wasn't saved. Uh, you was lost without God. Uh, uh, you needed to be saved from your sins. Uh, uh, somebody had told you the plan of salvation. Uh, you heard preaching that revealed unto you that you was a sinner. Uh, can I say we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God? Uh, can I say we was all born by uh, sinners? Uh, we were sinners by practice, uh, sinners by nature, uh, and even sinners by Voice. Uh, but somebody told us about the Lord uh, and the Lord uh, interrupted our life uh, and we realized that we needed Him uh, and we realized without Him uh, we could never be saved uh, and we die and go to hell uh, and we die in our sins uh, but hey, thanks be unto God, neighbor uh, we heard there's a better way uh, there was good news uh, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, how He Lord, according to the scriptures, uh, he died and was buried according to the scriptures, uh, and rose again according to the scriptures. Uh, he uh, he died for our sins, uh, rose again victorious over death, hell, and the grave, uh, and made salvation available uh, to any that would call upon him. Uh, hey, uh, and that day, neighbor, uh, when you called upon him, uh, for whosoever believeth uh, uh, in the name of the Lord shall. I'll be saved. Uh, uh, you came to Jesus, uh, got born again, uh, and he saved, saved your never dying soul. Uh, yeah. What a blessing to be saved. You say, why are some of these people so excited? Because uh, they're saved. Uh, their sins have been washed away. Uh, they're not going to die and go to hell. Uh, the champion of all champions. Uh, Lord Jesus Christ hath prevailed uh, and saved their soul. Uh, people don't have any problem getting, ups, uh, getting excited at a ball game. But when we come to church, we're supposed to be reverent. Can I say there's nothing more reverent than realizing you're a sinner and you're not known one no longer. Being saved means we've been pardoned from our sins. If you've been pardoned from your sins, then you've been sealed. You've been sealed by the person of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in Ephesians 1.13, In whom ye also trusted in the Lord Jesus. After that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Uh, in whom believed, uh, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Uh, hey, the day I got saved, I didn't realize all that was going on. Uh, I just knew I was lost. Uh, I just knew I needed to be saved. Uh, that day I got saved, uh, God did something supernatural. Uh, hey, He moved from heaven uh, 
into my heart. Uh, he did a supernatural operation, cut away the stony, fleshy part of my heart, uh, and he took up his abode, uh, and he sealed me uh, for all of eternity. Uh, I'm saved, uh, and I'm sealed. Uh, that means my soul uh, is preserved uh, until the Lord uh, uh, takes me home. Uh, one day I'll lay aside this old body of clay, uh, and I'll get a body fastened like the Son of God. God, uh, my soul is forever saved uh, and sealed by the Holy Spirit. Uh, I say, what's not to be excited about? So we see that being saved is being pardoned. We're sealed by the person of the Holy Spirit, but then we're sound by practice, by choice. We can only be sound by obtaining the wisdom and knowledge of the understanding that God gives, and that's done through practice, by choosing to do those things to become mature in Christ. I say, being sound by practice just simply is proving the things of God in our own life. That term sound caught my attention, Brother Brian, or my other Brother Brian. You say, what does sound mean? I'm glad you asked. That term sound means to be founded in truth. Wouldn't it be wonderful if everything in our world was based on truth? Wouldn't it be wonderful if the weatherman based everything on truth? Wouldn't it be wonderful if the national media reported everything in truth? Do you think the national media just figured out that Joe Biden has mashed potatoes for brains? I've been preaching on it for three years. You think that crowd that's around him every day don't see that? You know why they're making a big deal out of it? Because they just let people know. If they'd been reporting truth for the last three years, he wouldn't even be in the White House. You're welcome. That didn't cost you anything. That, that's for my friend, Brother Bob Drake. huh? Wouldn't it be a blessing if everything was founded in truth? Wouldn't it be a blessing if your, your boss on the job did everything based on truth? Wouldn't it be a blessing if your neighbors did everything based on truth? Wouldn't it be a blessing if your children always told you the truth? Uh, to be sound means to be founded in truth. Can I help you with something before I go any along? It's impossible for God to lie. God has given us the truth. In 3 John, John is just beside himself to hear that his disciples uh, have been founded in truth. My dear friends, what a blessing to have the truth. And can I ask you a question? Does the truth have you? Hmm? means to be founded in truth means to be firm say preacher why are you so firm on things because the Bible teaches us to be firm I want to be sound means to be firm that doesn't mean to be uncompassionate doesn't mean to uh, not care just means to be firm can I say God he's the one that drew the line I, I've had it up to here with churches they claim to have the truth and they keep moving the lines. I tell you when we move the lines, when God moves them. And He's never going to move them. He's the same yesterday, today, forevermore. And He said, He changeth not. Can I say God's never changed His mind about anything? You know why they keep changing the lines? Because they're not sound. They don't like the truth. And can I help you with something? I say this all the time. Sometimes the truth hurts. It, it's great when we're preaching on heaven. Hallelujah! But when we're preaching on our own personal sin, oh me, truth still truth. Can I say something else? That word sound means to be strong. Does not the Bible tell us to be strong in the power of His might? 
are you sick to death of wimpy, weakling Christians? I'm so sick to death of preachers that are so apologetic. I'm so sorry that we're right. Uh, wearing their skinny jeans. Uh, walking around real prissy potted. Uh, bless God, I would to God that men would once again be men. And that men of God would once stand with boldness. Uh, would once again preach uh, like their backbone was a railroad tie uh, and they didn't back up on anything. Hallelujah. Uh, means to be strong. God help us. To be sound means to be solid. To be solid. The Lord be my helper. I've been preaching this book for 37 years. Thanks be unto God, I know more now than I did 37 years ago. But I'm still standing on the same things I've stood for 37 years. I'm not perfect. I fall way short of the glory of God every single day of my life. But I would say that I, and when it comes to preaching that book, I've been solid. Hmm. Can I say to be sound means that which cannot be overthrown or refuted. Hmm. I'm so tired of churches taking Baptists off their name. I'm so tired of churches saying, well, we're going to change the Bible. All in the name of getting a bigger crowd. Well, if you become worldly to get a worldly crowd, all you got is worldliness. But when you preach truth, uh, and you preach it in love, uh, and you preach it just like God wrote it, uh, my dear friends, when it uh, brings in folks, uh, it'll change them for the glory of God. Uh, we don't have to lower God's standard to get a crowd. Uh, hey, uh, God's standards ought to get the crowd up to where God is, my dear friends. Uh, and when we stand for this, it should not be able to be easily overthrown or refuted. Now again, I am not bragging on me. I am nothing. I'm a zero with the hole knocked out of it. But for 25 years at the Emmanuel Baptist Church, I've laid this charge. If I preach something, and you can correct me from the Bible, I'll gladly stand up and recount it and tell you I'm sorry. And Brother Bob, there's been many who've gotten mad, many who didn't like it, and many call me many names, but I've never had one. Show me where I preached something that wasn't true. They'll say I did, but they can't show me I did. Uh, because either you're sound or you're not. The word sound means to be right. Can I say it's always right to be right? It's better to be right than popular. Can I say you only got one shot at this thing, you might as well be right. Because our lives are fleeing. Might as well be right. Hmm. Uh, means to be correct. Can I say this? It means to be free from error. And to be sound means not to be shaky. You know what I see today? I see a lot of shaky people. Now let me help you something. You don't become sound by being lazy. Brother Adrian, you don't become sound by being casual. Being sound takes making choices and working hard with the knowledge, the understanding, and the wisdom that God lays at your feet. Can I say, the Bible makes it clear that we're to be sound of heart. Psalms 119 and verse number 
80 says, Let my heart be sound in thy statutes, uh, that I be not ashamed. Let me ask you something this morning. If the Lord was standing here, would you be ashamed before him? At your soundness of his statutes? Because I've got news for you, he is here. And he sees our hearts. The Bible says in Proverbs 14 and 30, A sound heart is the life of the flesh, but, the in, in, but envy the rottenness of the bones. Do you have a sound heart today? Is your heart founded in truth? Is your heart firm this morning? Is your heart fr- uh, strong? Is it solid? Is your heart not easily overthrown or able to be refuted? Is your heart right? Is your heart correct? Is it free from error? Or is your heart shaky this morning? Hmm. Here's how to know. Did you run to get to come to church today? Or did you drag to get to come to church today? The Bible's clear we're to be sound of heart. Can I say the Bible's clear that we're to be sound in wisdom? We find that in verse number 7. In Proverbs 3 and 21, it says, My son, let not them depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. Proverbs 8, 14, Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. Uh, uh, the Lord, uh, He is understanding. He dumps Himself in us. Uh, uh, he dumps His knowledge in us. Uh, he gives us wisdom. Uh, so we'll have sound wisdom uh, and be able to use discretion. Uh, are you solid in your wisdom? Are you strong in your wisdom? Are you firm in your wisdom? We're to have sound wisdom. Are you sound in wisdom today? Can I say this? This word always makes people nervous. Brother Humberto, I never understood this, but people, when you mention this term, they get real antsy. We're to be sound in doctrine. Brother Ed, they'll say, just preach Jesus, don't preach any doctrine. You can't preach Jesus without preaching doctrine. You see what they don't want you to preach, and they don't want you to, you to preach the precepts and statutes of the Word of God. Because that's what doctrine is. It's the studying uh, and the beliefs laid out in the Bible. Uh, uh, it's the teaching of the truths of the Bible. Uh, and you can't get to the truth, Jesus, because uh, He is the truth, uh, the way, uh, and the life, uh, unless you preach doctrine. Uh, uh, but we're to be sound in doctrine. Uh, we're not to be taught to and fro carried about with every wind of doctrine uh, uh, listen as we're sitting here this morning uh, there's over 300 different religions and denominations in the world uh, but there's only one that Jesus delivered uh, and we're to be sound uh, in the truths of the Bible uh, in doctrine uh, I don't I can't help it what the uh, the Campbellites of the street believe uh, I can't help it what the JW I, I can't help it what the morons, I mean Mormons believe. Uh, I can't help it what the Presbyterians and Episcopalians believe. Uh, I can't help it that the Catholics are praying to Mary this morning. Uh, but I can't help it uh, what I believe. Uh, and I believe what God said. Uh, and I believe it just like he said it. Uh, and hey, uh, where to be sound is. 2 Timothy 4, 3 says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Joe Wolstein telling you every day Friday. Uh, sure it is when you got $600,000 hidden in the walls uh, of your sanctuary uh, uh, for a rainy day fund. Uh, uh, listen, uh, he's made it rich uh, on the backs of people that were not invested in sound doctrine uh, and they believed in him. 
them instead of believing in Jesus. Uh, can I say the Bible says in Titus chapter number 1 verse 9 uh, holding fast the faithful word uh, as he hath been taught uh, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort uh, and to convince the gainsayers. Uh, Titus 2 and 1 uh, but speak thou things which become sound doctrine. Uh, all of our pe preaching and teaching uh, ought to ensure uh, that people's faith will grow in what God said. Uh, we're to be sound in doctrine. Do you know the Baptist distinctives? Do you know why you're Baptist? Do you know why baptism's important? Do you know about the Lord's table? Do you know uh, uh, why the King James Bible's the Word of God for English-speaking people? Uh, do you know what you believe? Do you know about the security of the believer? Uh, do you know about the local church? Do you know all these things that are sound doctrine? Uh, are you firm in them? Are you solid in them? Or are you shaky in them? You know, the biggest excuse I hear, Brother Ron, and people that either won't witness the folks, well, I just don't know what to say. Well, you're telling me you're not sound. Do you know that, that Jesus even told his disciples that the Comforter would come, that we may be witnesses unto, for him unto Judea, Samaria, Jerusalem, other most parts of the world? Do you realize that one part of the Holy Spirit's office work is bring under his remembrance uh, uh, the Word of God? Do you realize uh, uh, when it comes to being a witness, all you've got to do is be available? And let those things God has put in you come out of you. Mm. Can I say we're to be sound in doctrine? We're to be sound in faith. You know, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. But can I say that the Bible says in Titus 2.2 2, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, and patience. Are you sound in faith today? When troubles come, are you standing on the rock or are you shaking because of the troubles? Because I got news for you, troubles are coming. Man's days are few and full of trouble. You're going to face some hardships, but you'll never face them alone. We're to be sound in faith, but not only that, we're to be sound in the faith. Titus 1.13, this witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith. What faith? The one Jude talked about. The faith that was once delivered unto the saints were to earnestly contend for that faith. What faith is it? The faith that Jesus taught his disciples and it was handed down and it's been handed down in the perpetuity of the church and we still got it today. Amen. I'm not looking for something new. If it's new, it's not true. There's nothing new under the sun. And if it's true, it's not new. Uh, Jeremiah said, ask for the old paths. Walk therein. That's the good way. Uh, I don't need some newfangled anything. Uh, I'm still trying to uh, get sound in all the old paths. Hallelujah. Huh? Mm. Let me help you something. I'm not meaning to be ugly, but I'm about ready to get ugly right here, okay? We're to be sound in our mind. Let me say that again. Only Dr. Phil heard it. We're to be sound in our mind. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Perfect peace have they whose mind is stayed on the Lord, stayed on thee. I've never in my life seen a generation where so many people are facing so much anxiety and mental issues. Now let me help you with something. I'm not, I'm not, listen for the third time, I'm not saying people don't have issues. But a lot of our issues would be solved if we'd get sound in the Bible. I told Miss Annette yesterday, 
We stopped over at Menards. I always go in to get something, and I come out with a whole basket full of Menards. Uh, you know their slogan say big money with Menards? No, it's spend big money with Menards every time I go there. And I saw somebody walking in with their service dog. And I understand there are people, especially some of our combat veterans, that saw things and faced things that we can't even comprehend of. And can I say they have uh, 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 found solace in having a partner through an animal that's been trained to help them deal with their PTSD. I understand that. But can I say that term, if I believe, Brother Clint, came about for those individuals, combat veterans, PTSD. Now, if Miss Barb runs you off the road, you got PTSD. And by the way, she will run you off the road if you're going slow. Uh, rubbing is racing, trading paint. Huh? I asked Miss Annette, I said, how did we ever survive till 2015? without having to carry our dogs everywhere. Amen. They even got them in restaurants now. Dogs in restaurants. Dogs in the stores. Dogs at the grocery store. I used to think dogs were supposed to be outside. Then I got one that sleeps at my feet at the house, uh, but he don't go to the store with me. Uh, he don't sit up on the table when I'm eating. Are you listening? Uh, 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 and uh, uh, There's a difference between a service dog and you not wanting to leave one in the car. Yeah. You know what to keep you from leaving it in the car? Leave it at home. But we gotta have our little, our little dog. And now they, now they, they're using turtles, and snakes, and all kinds of things brings comfort to people. You know what being, give you a sound mind? The word of God. Yeah. Uh, can I say we got people sitting in church popping pills because they can't deal with life? You know why? Got sound. If you get sound in the Bible, let God do something in your heart uh, and work it out uh, up to your mind. Uh, uh, there'll be a lot of things that you're not coping with right now that you could cope with uh, if you learn to give it to God and let God do something in your heart and life. Uh, again, I understand there are some people got issues and there are some of you on medication. Please do not stop taking it. We don't want to see that part of you. Uh, but I'm saying a lot of this stuff could be solved if we put more of the Bible in them than medication. Hmm. Is this the Bible true or is it not? Did not the Bible say, uh, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear. You know why you're afraid and anxious about all the time? You, you, you're trying the wrong spirit but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Can I say some people don't have a sound mind preacher because their love's wrong. They're bitter at a brother. They're bitter at a sister. They're bitter at a neighbor. They're bitter at somebody that done them wrong uh, and therefore the Spirit of God can't work in their heart and life because uh, they got a root of bitterness. Uh, you need to let God uh, uh, extract that root of bitterness uh, Fill you up with love, uh, and he'll give you a sound mind. Uh, some people can't sleep at night because of how they've acted. You're welcome. That didn't cost you nothing. I told you I was going to get mean. Can I say this? The Bible is very clear that we're to be sound in speech. Our yeas are to be yeas, and our nays are to be nays. Titus 2, 8 says, In all things showing thyself a pattern of good works and doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned, uh, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. We're to have sound speech. Listen, the devil just looking for a little crack. You take, you know, you give him an inch, you'll take a mile. And all you got to do is just say something wrong. And somebody will run with that thing and you'll be condemned. 
So by God's grace and God's help and by being full of the Word of God and the power of God and the Spirit of God, God help us to be sound in our speech. Especially now because it's being broadcast everywhere. God help us to be sound of speech. And I said all that to say this. Are you saved today? Can you go back to a place where in your heart and life you turn from your sin and you turn to the Lord Jesus Christ and ask Him to save you? Are you saved? Can you go back to that place? Right now in your mind, can you go back to a place where you met the Lord and He raised you from in newness of life. You passed from death unto life. He made a new creature out of you. Can you go back to that place? I didn't ask you if you could go back to a place where you prayed. I'm asking you, can you go back to a place where the Lord changed you? Are you saved? If you're saved, then you're sealed. If you're saved and sealed, are you sound today? You know what would solve a lot of our church problems across America? Is we had sound churches. To remind you again, to be sound is to be founded in truth, firm, to be strong, to be solid, that which cannot be overthrown or refuted, to be right, correct, free from error, not to be shaky. Are you sound today? If not, are you willing to become sound? Are you willing to say, Lord, help me to be the Christian? that will please you and that you want me to be. God, take my frailties and make me strong in the faith. Lord, I want to make you my choice. I want that sound wisdom that you've laid up for people that seek after you. He did say, seek and you shall find. In a moment, we're going to have an invitation. If you're here today and you're not saved, why don't you come? Look at somebody, take, your, take a Bible, show you how to be saved. You can be saved today. Your life can be changed now and through all of eternity. It can be the greatest day in your life. I got saved 50 years ago and hadn't got over it yet. You can be saved today. If you're here today and you're saved, you're sealed, but are you sound? Are you somebody the Lord can count on? You do realize that. He would reach down and he got five smooth stones, put them in a shepherd bag, went out to fight the giant, pulled out a smooth stone and slew the giant. Can the Lord put you in his shepherd's bag and pull you out to take down giants? Are you sound? Or do you need to stay in the brook for a while and get some of them rough edges off? Why don't you make up your mind today, I want to be a sound Christian. You can be sound today. Just say, Lord, help me. Help me in these areas of my life to prove my Christianity to the world that what I have is real. Are you willing to do that today? Let's all stand, Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. While they're coming, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we sure do bless you. Pray you take my inability and this message you put on my heart and speak to hearts. Lord, I pray especially if there's somebody here in our midst today who's not saved, never been born again, Today would be the day of their salvation. Now is the accepted time. Lord, I know the devil tell them, put it off. The devil try and tell them they're, they're all right. The devil's a liar. We know that. Lord, they may not know that. So I pray the sweet Holy Ghost of God, through cords of love, would draw them to an altar of repentance. And then, Father, I certainly do pray for your people. Lord, I pray they'd not be satisfied in being shaky. Lord, they'd have a desire to become sound in every facet of their Christian life that Jesus would be glorified with their life and that God, you would use them to prove to this lost and dying world that Jesus can change a life. Now God, have your will and way in this invitation. Speak to hearts. We'll bless you for it. For it's in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we do pray. Amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.